Wrist pain is one of the more commonly misdiagnosed conditions in the human body. Here at the Hand and Wrist Institute at DISC, our job is to make the correct diagnosis in a prompt manner. There are many conditions within the wrist that can lead to wrist pain, such as tumors, inflammatory arthritis, trauma, etc. The initial treatment for many of these conditions is an anti-inflammatory medicine, resting the wrist with a brace, injections, and if all else fails, there are advanced arthroscopic wrist techniques in surgery that may be beneficial. Through two small, minimally invasive incisions, less than two millimeters in width, a very small 1.9 millimeter scope and other instruments are placed into the wrist joint to visualize that joint on a TV screen. Through this small incisions, we're able to remove tumors, to repair ligaments and fractures. As a result of this minimally invasive surgery compared to the older procedures that involved a very lengthy procedure, fusing bones together and removing part of the wrist mobility, we were abs absolutely able to get patients back to work in a very quick amount of time and restore full mobility to the wrist joint. What you're about to see is an arthroscopic procedure in an athlete who had torn their triangular fiber cartilage, which is a small cartilage within the wrist that is susceptible to trauma from a torquing injury, in this case from a lot of topspin throughout their tennis game. As a result of that tear of the cartilage, there are two treatments. One is to repair the cartilage and one is to debride the cartilage. The most common is simply to go in and remove the area of torn cartilage, such as in this patient, and within weeks they are back in, in therapy getting full movement and returning to full sporting activities within six weeks. Arthroscopic surgery involves triangulation. Here with the, the arthroscope in my right hand, which allows a video picture uh, moving instrumentation with the left hand. This shows the main ligaments of the wrist, the extrinsic ligaments on the palmar side or front of the wrist, which are stout ligaments that go from the radius in the nine o'clock position there to the scaphoid in the 12 o'clock position. This shows the interosseous ligament between the scaphoid and lunate, this kind of fluffy structure that is a, a very important ligament that holds the two bones together. And it will move from the, this portion of the wrist, the radial margin of the wrist, looking again along the front of the wrist to more of the extrinsic ligament system. Then we're going to sweep into the ulnar side of the wrist. That's the lunate fossa of the distal radius, now extending further ulnar, which is the triangular fiber cartilage, and this shows actually a tear uh, of the cartilage, which is a degenerative tear. You can see all the fibrillation of the cartilage, uh, and then that's the head of the ulna, which is the bone that articulates with the distal radius. Now I'm going through the triangulation technique uh, with the opposite hand. I'm going to insert instrumentation that is a small motorized shaver that I work with a foot piece and it has suction attached so like a little vacuum cleaner, I'm going to uh, probe the area first and then I will put the uh, motorized device in to trim out the edges, these rough edges so to speak, and smooth this out. The probe allows me to see the extent of the injury, probing different crevices, checking the stability of the ligament, and cartilage.
here again checking the integrity of the ligament, the scaphalunate ligament. little loose flecks of cartilage that are due to trauma that you will see hanging down in certain areas that uh, we also trim out uh, with the shaving system just to clean up the entire joint of any damage. We run fluid through the wrist during the procedure that distends the joint and it's a physiologic salt water normal saline solution. that allows for optimal visualization. Now finally putting in a little biting forcep that allows me to uh, trim the most radial part of the tear that's up against the radius. It's a very sharp device that actually has suction attached to it. Take several attempts usually to get out all of the frayed pieces. That will be replaced now with the motorized shaving device. that will suck the loose pieces as they are being trimmed out uh, into the jaws of the shaver. You can see how this cleans up nicely. And then finally, removing the scope and then closing uh, the wounds.